Hello everyone and welcome to another Unity shader tutorial. In this video I want to talk about if statements in shaders. And usually it's better to avoid if statements altogether when you're writing a shader because GPUs don't really handle branching code too well. So if you can get away with using other functions that can duplicate the same effect of an if statement or if uh, and then if else and then else, uh, it's much better to actually use that than actually using the uh, uh, if statements. So in this video, I'll first create a shader using if statements and then uh, achieving the same results using other functions that act as the if statement for us. So first, let's create a plane. And let's rotate this plane up here because our shader is going to color our pixels depending on their uh, world height. So let's zero that out. And the whole idea behind the shader will be to, uh, to have it so that if the pixel is less than 2 uh, on the Y, it would be red. If it's more than three, it would be green, and if it's any, or if it's more than three, it would be blue, and then if it's anything in between, it would be green. So let's first create our shader. So we'll make uh, a standard surface shader, but then we'll replace the code inside with what we have in our uh, shader introduction video. So I'll leave a link in the description to that video uh, below. So let's call this one if statement and uh, let's open that up and see what we can do so my shader is the one that we created in the introduction video so I'll just copy everything in here and replace everything in the if statement shader with it and this is just a simple this is just a simple um, vertex fragment shader so let's just organize that a little bit Okay, there we go. All right, so um, the first thing that we need to do is to use the if statements to uh, color our pixels. So for example, we can do something like, uh, of course this shader had the world position and we did that in the previous video as well. So in here, IW position should have our pixels world position. So we can do if I dot W position dot Y is less than 2.0, return a float or a half four of 1.0, 0.0, 0.0, .0 and 1.0. And then for now we'll do else return a half four of 0 0.0, 0 0.0, 1.0, .0, and 1.0. So what this does is if our pixel is less than two, it returns red. If it's, uh, or otherwise it returns blue. So let's try that out. In here, um, we have an error in here. Oh, semicolon right here. Okay, so in here now, we can have our material. So materials, mat2, let's attach our shader to it. Oh, we didn't rename the shader. So instead of my shader, we'll call it if statement. And then in tutorials, if statement, and then attach it to this. And there we go. So here we have it. If the pixels are less than two, they are red. If it's more than two, they are blue. So the only thing left is to have it so that if it's in between, it's green. So we can do else if. Here we go. I dot w position dot y is more than 3.0 return a half four of 1.0 or 0 0.0 1.0 0, 0, 0, 0 and 1.0 what do we have here um, 
if it's less than three. So if it's uh, less than two, return red. Otherwise, if it's less than three, return green. And then if it's neither of those, just return blue instead. So now if we go back, there we go. So two, three, and then anything above. So how can we replace this by uh, other statements? And what we're going to be using is the step function and the lerp function that we can use in CG. So the first thing that we'll do is to declare the colors that we want to use. So half four red is going to be equal to a half four of 1.0, 0, 0.0, 0, 0.0, 0, 0.0, and 1.0. Our half four green is going to be equal to half four of 0, 0.0, 1.0, 0, 0.0, 0, 0, and 1.0. And then half four blue is going to be equal to half four of 0, 0.0, 0, 0.0, 1.0, and 0, 0.0. So now that we have our three colors, we can take out the if statements. And try to use uh, the step and lerp functions to achieve the same result. So we should have half four color, which will be our final color. And this will return, this function will just return color. So we will also need um, so to initialize this to being just a, cl a clear color, so just black. So this will be a half four of 0 0.0, 0 0.0, 0 0.0, and 1.0. And all the way at the end, we'll just saturate this color so that all the values go back to uh, somewhere between zero and one. So we'll say that our color equals saturate color. All right, so this should be the basic setup. For now, our color is gonna stay black, so if we go back here again, everything should be black. So the first thing that we're gonna do is to apply the red color to anything below two. For that, we will do color plus equals alert from nothing, so which is black, so maybe, maybe we should actually initialize uh, a clear color. So half four clear is going to be equal to half four, 0 0.0, 0 0.0, 0 0.0, and 1.0. So our color will start off being clear. And then we will lerp from clear to our red color that we want, so red. And then for the time uh, in between, we just want zero if it's more than two and then it would be one if it's less than two. For that, what we can do is use the step function. So step 0, 0.0 and then 2.0 minus our position, i dot w position dot y. And this will be it for that if we go back now. As you can see, anything below two is colored red. And why this works is because, let's say our position is one, it would be two minus one, which would be equal to one. And step, if it's more than zero, it returns one. If it's less than zero, it returns zero. So this is the whole idea behind it. So step acts as our if statement, so returning zero, if it's not in the range that we want, returning one, if it's inside that range. And our lerp is, um, acts as the body of that if statement. Now for our blue color, we can do color plus equals lerp from clear to blue. And it's the same idea, but in reverse now. So step 0, 0.0. And now what we want is to check if it's more than three. And for that, we will just take our i dot position or w position dot y minus 3.0. So if our position is, let's say four, it would be four minus three, which would be positive. So the step will return one. If it's two, it would be two minus three, which is negative one. So the step is less than zero, so it will return zero. So we would get our black color added instead of our blue. So now if we go back, 
there we go we have our blue color now the in-between color is a little bit more tricky so if we're doing else if statements we need to uh, limit it between everything that's more than two and everything less than three so let's start off first by everything less than three so color plus equals lerp so we're lerping from clear to green and our step will be so first let's start off by everything less than three and we did this before so for everything less than two we had two minus our position so everything less than three would just be three minus our pixels position so 3.0 minus i dot w position dot y and this will be 0, 0.0 for the other for the first parameter so 3 0, 0.0 and then 3 minus our position dot w and that should give us everything underneath 3 so if we go back so we have our green here and it's going into the red so now we need to limit it so that it doesn't go into the red at all and to do this all we would need to do is just to multiply it by the sign of everything um, everything more than 2 so minus or times the sign of i dot w position dot y minus 2.0 and this is what we have here so if it's let's say um, 2.5 3 minus 2.5 would be um, 0 0.5 so it's within our range and oh we need a bracket here so this would be 2.5 so it's positive and if it's 2.5 it would be 2.5 minus 2 which is 0 0.5 which is still positive so this would be positive multiplied by a positive so we get positive 0 0.5 which would give us um, something that's more than 0, 0.0 and that would return 1 if we have something that's let's say 1.5 instead this would be uh, 3 minus 1.5 which is 1.5 so that's positive so far but 1.5 minus 2 would give us negative 0 0.5 so that's going to be multiplied by a negative number so it's going to be negative 1.5 which would give us a zero instead so no green is applied on the other hand if it's let's say 3.5 it would be 3 minus 3.5 which is negative 0 0.5 and then the sign would be positive because 3.5 is more than 2 so we'd get negative 0 0.5 so we wouldn't get any green so now if we go back, oh, we missed something here. So step, that's bracket there, that's the bracket here, that's this bracket, oh, missing one more bracket. There we go. So now we have the same effect that we had in our if statements, but using lerp and step functions, which is much more efficient than actually using any if statements at all in shaders. And if we want to improve this a bit, we can declare all these colors up here as constants. This way, we're not recreating all the colors every time that we're uh, dealing with pixels. So for example, like this, uh, we can have a static fixed for. So we can take that and apply it right here. So static constant fixed for. And this would be uh, so our clear. So clear color would be 0, 0.0. And then if we want, for example, the red color would be red underscore color. And this would be 1.0. And then we can duplicate that again and do green color and then do blue color. And then so for the green, this would be 1.0 for the blue. Over here, this would be 1. And then we can remove all this now and just say that color is going to be equal to clear underscore color. So we're just going to be using these colors that we have. Red is going to be a red color. So all these are clear underscore colors. Our green color will be replaced by this. And our blue color will be replaced by this. And there we go. So we should have the exact same effect. But now we don't, we're not uh, declaring these colors every for every pixel. 
And uh, yeah, this should be a quick rundown of how um, to replace if and else if and else statements within your shaders using lerp and step. You can also use clamp whenever you need to. Uh, usually I only use clamp if I'm interpolating between two values, uh, but I will be doing a terrain shader tutorial using these. So I wanted to take it to make this video first so I can reference back to, uh, instead of explaining in that video how to use lerp and step as well uh, to replace these if statements. So I really hope that this video helped. Um, if you have any questions, suggestions, or feedback, please leave them below. Otherwise, thank you very much for watching, and I will see you in the next video.